How's it going? Um, yeah, we're here. Um, gonna do a little bit of channeled guidances. I'm gonna use my um, crystal casting um, set and maybe some cards. Um, I am currently sitting within uh, my Akashic Records and connected with my spirit team. Um, I don't yet know exactly the purpose for being here and filming this today besides the fact that it's where I'm meant to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. So uh, we're just going to kind of go with the flow and see what comes up. Um, we can receive a little bit of ch channel guidances that will best help um, those who come across this video. And uh, yeah, I hope y'all have been having a good week. Um, whenever you're finding this, technically, this can be considered a timeless reading if you came across it. Just trust that uh, the timing was right for you. I ask that my spirit team and my record keepers guide me and support me through this process. May you speak through me and give me the words to direct this knowledge, this awareness, and this light in the way that will be best received and most aligned with those who come across this video. I trust and surrender to the process, to the wisdom, and to the energy. May it be what it needs to be. We wish to talk about the energy of passion. We wish to talk about the energy of compassion, rage, and tenderness. As they are one and the same and within each other 
and grow and expand. Currently, the Earth Collective is expressing the complexity of tenderness and gentleness. Through the essence of divine rage. As rage, when harmonized and aligned with love and truth, is a reaction to internal tenderness and love of a pursuit for gentleness. There is so much fear and stagnancy locking the communities that are in fact most aligned to express their divine rage, who have the power, creativity, and the compassion, the truth, and the knowing, the courage, and the divine light, to show the truth of rage. Rage that comes from tenderness. And the fingerprint of divinity lies within the choices being presented through the collective at this time across the global scape situations come to the surface illuminating shadow and fog malevolence and confusion This is not an opportunity to hide. This is not an opportunity for anger out of vengeance, but rage out of tenderness, out of the desire and the awareness to see the path leading to compassion, peace, and joy amongst all that dwell here. You who have found yourselves watching this video have been experiencing tugs and ties between these themes where does the root of your tenderness lie? How do you perceive your ability to experience tenderness? Your worth to experience tenderness. What rules allow you, excuse me, stifle you from sharing and enacting tenderness with others?
tenderness requires action, movement, expression, a gentle expression of rage, the powerful expression of rage, rage that commits to action, rage that draws in accountability, rage that brings awareness to shadow, rage that demands balance, rage that clears the way for tenderness, rage that demands others to see themselves, rage that shows the truth of themselves so that others can see the truth within themselves. Courage is multifaceted. Like the sphere, like the embodiment of truth, Courage is a choice. Courage allows fear to exist because it exists within them. But courage chooses the path to tenderness. Courage does not allow fear to restrict their path. Courage is creative in how it shows itself. Each individual with their own path, their own perspective of this energy, their own fluidity. to approach their expression. What action can you take? How can you uplift yourself by uplifting your community? There is a path for each of you who come across this video. This was not chosen lightly. We illuminate this with Akashic light, a light of neutral love, of awareness, of being. Allow it to show you. Allow it to inspire you. Allow it to create and express love within you. Allow it to draw in realizations. Know that courage and rage can be tender. Know that it will not diminish your light 
when you allow the fire of rage to guide you. When it shows you the actions to express the movements to make, the words to say. Draw your rage from tenderness and all will be right and well. This will deplete the rage from vengeance and allow you to pave the way For more light and to transmute the shadow. There's another message yet to give. More words to be said. We will allow Carrie to return to complete the remainder of these messages with our guidance, words, and wisdom. Be love and be loved. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess uh, a little bit of impromptu channeling from one of my record keepers. Uh, love you, appreciate you. All right, let's see. I said there's a few more little guidances and things to share. Let's see. This is not the time for sending cards all over the place, okay? Pull a few more cards. Mm. There we go. Hi. Compassion, pulse of life, all the different cards, leap of faith. Some of these are familiar from uh, what was it? The pickup pile I did recently, or it might have been one of my readings for Patreon. This has been coming up so much lately, this card, particularly bound by this piece of amber. Um, there's some, I don't really, I haven't looked into Lemurian stuff too much from my records. I 
just hasn't been one of the topics that they've had me work on, um, despite it coming up a lot lately. Um, but there's some cycles repeating that we're experiencing now that were experienced during the era that people discuss Lemuria being a part of, regardless of your belief on that account, just that time period, um, at the very least, you can, uh, can think about it like that. We have some very old, old, old cycles coming back around, um, uh, in a way that hopefully we can learn a little bit better and approach it with a little more, uh, wisdom a little more compassion, a little more humility. Um, humility has been a big theme lately as well. Yeah. With the tourmalated quartz. I'm just feeling that humility is is acting as an anchor and as a transmuter for a lot of shadow and fog rising up lately. Um, shadow meaning malevolence and fog meaning confusion. That kind of being anchored by the energy of humility is kind of helping to protect and um, ward off some of those energies, transmute some of those energies. So that, that could be a word and an energy to maybe pursue and maybe go into meditation about. Uh, take some consideration into how humility is experienced in your life. Do you perceive it to be a strength? Do you perceive it to be a weakness? How do you personally define humility? Some of you may need to uh, uh, work on embracing a little more humility. Uh, there's nothing wrong with confidence in yourself. That's not what this is about. Um, but pride uh pride is different from confidence and pride can be the kind of dis dysfunctional expression of human of kind of a dysfunctional opposite to humility because pride at least in the context that i'm being drawn to talk about it in is um self-emphasis self at the destruction of others, um, putting yourself, building yourself up in a way that brings other people down. Confidence is neutral and loving awareness of who you are and your ability to express that. And confidence includes and embraces humility because confidence exists both separate from others. You can love and be aware of the truth of yourself without being connected to others, but at the same time, there it's not negatively impacted by anything anybody else does. It just simply exists by a harmonized expression of yourself. So does humility. Um, 
we're also being drawn to find some courage in navigating where we've been rejecting emotion in preference for logic or um, reason in conjunction with physical reality, physical signs. And where that has been a disservice to our truth and to our growth and to our capabilities. This bumblebee jasper also always reminds me of collaboration. Um, and the, and so I'm, I'm feeling that connecting with your community and people that you love and respect and care for will help you with this process um, of analyzing and addressing where you have been rejecting emotion in your life um, with all of the trauma with all of the tumult and just just shitty stuff going on in the world it's really easy to want to shut off our emotions and to just ignore it because it's so painful and it's so difficult to comprehend and we feel so disconnected from control. But when we repress or disconnect ourselves from certain emotions, especially ones like harmonized and divine rage, like uh, my record keeper was just speaking about. It can kind of put us in a place of stagnancy and we can feel more lost because some of these emotions are trying to teach us wisdoms and show us paths to take and which way to go. And by kind of connecting with the harmonized expression of some of these more complex emotions like divine rage, um, we're able to tap into a deeper and more honest expression of compassion. Uh, more complex and harmonized expression of love because love doesn't hide from anything. Love sees with clarity and compassion for all aspects of the self. Love doesn't reject any emotion it sees it and it understands it and it helps to heal it and harmonize it. And some of this process that's been experienced right now is really just helping to awaken hidden areas within our energy and within our collective and bring them to awareness, allow us to see things with more complexity. I can't help but take note that we have the first two cards of the deck that popped out at different times here, Beyond Wisdom, Pulse of Light, and then we have the new paradigm over here. 
and this is really just kind of reiterating for me a lot of things that I've been told and things that uh, seem to be in the works with uh, collective shifts and that as painful as some of this this cycle that is closing out and opening up to new cycles it's helping us to address what we have been resisting addressing within each other and part of acknowledging that we're all connected and we're all worthy of life requires some action requires some leaps of faith and those will show up differently for everyone and require a lot of flexibility malleability redirection and I love that we keep having spheres come up as they are kind of the perfect embodiment or shape of the soul of the sphere of truth of completion of the universe that we dwell in and of so many truths and energies that are just beyond uh, language. They're telling me some people watching this video have been uh, resisting a lot of action lately. Resisting a lot of redirection and change. And I get that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I totally feel that. Um... I'm just saying it's important to acknowledge that stagnancy, treat it with compassion, and look at where you've been rejecting some emotions tied to that uh, resistance. Some of you have been just waiting for the right timing when really you create the right timing. Some of you are afraid of taking that leap of faith. Some of you are trying to rely too much on that logic and reason when really it's beyond logic sometimes. We have to allow our intuition to kind of propel us more now than ever. And with this pulse of life, especially with this uh, petrified wood, I feel like it's asking us to kind of return to our center, return to Return to our roots and our beginning, and we're going to be able to see them differently. So that might look like going back to your childhood and looking at it through a different lens 
through the lens of your perspective as it exists now. It might be for some of you looking into some of your past lives, um, into your soul origin. Um, I'm also getting that more and more we're going to find ourselves centering, anchoring, grounding our energy cosmically versus purely just into the center of the earth. Um, a technique that I've used and taught for years at this point is kind of spreading tree roots or a grounding cord down into the center of the earth. And then kind of as it goes into the center of the earth, it almost enters a portal and extends out circling, looping like a spiral and grounding into the center of our galaxy. And then going through that spiraling around and grounding into a center of our universe. And that can really help with reorienting perspective and anchoring ourselves in a broader and more expansive way which has actually been invaluable in helping me to navigate my experiences on earth in a more embodied way. Um, it doesn't disconnect me from earth by doing, um, by grounding in that way. Um, it helps me see my experiences on earth from a more complete and complex point of view and uh, yeah, so I'm just feeling very strongly that that's something that some of you may benefit from exploring. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's any other insights or guidances that they want me to share. Yeah, there's a lot of energy of stability here. A lot of us are desiring a lot of stability that just kind of doesn't exist right now. Because collectively we are in such a tumultuous experience. And a lot of us are yearning for a sense of structure and a sense of stability. And some of that is keeping us in old habits out of a desire for normalcy. It's keeping us compliant with harmful habits, harmful structures, because we don't really know what to do otherwise. We don't really know how to find an alternative. We feel out of control, that we have no control over what is being experienced because of certain structures and power plays in, in the existence right now. So it's okay to acknowledge it and maybe some of that can be a guiding force for understanding where maybe we've been rejecting some emotions out of a desire for false stability, false normalcy, when really nothing is uh, normal anymore. And it won't be normal. Normal never really existed to begin with, but um, it really doesn't exist now. Yeah. Let me see if there's anything else they want me to share.
Yeah. It's okay to grieve. It's allowed. It's okay to feel the loss of this normalcy of stability. To grieve the period in your life where you thought you knew where you were going. You thought you knew what the future was gonna be like, where you thought you understood literally anything. It's okay to grieve for the collective trauma and pain that's being experienced by allowing ourselves to grieve and to feel and to connect with that pain it will actually help connect us to that divine rage through tenderness that was spoken about earlier it will help to find a more harmonized experience with that energy allow you to harness the divine rage allow you to break harmful or dysfunctional habits. Grief is a powerful and beautiful expression of love. Grief shows that you love, it shows that you care shows that you feel a connection with your community. It shows strength and fortitude. Grief and love are deeply powerful. Divine rage is a beautiful expression of strength. It brings us closer to joy. Because it propels change and it harmonizes events and actions and beliefs that disconnect us from joy. So it's gonna be more important than ever to trust in that grief, trust in that divine rage, but to also discern the difference between divine rage that's rooted in tenderness and divine rage rooted in vengeance. And may this spark endless realizations for you. May it help you rewrite the stories you've told about yourself and that you've told to others that you've experienced in the world around you in a way that is more honest about who you are, more gentle, about who you are, about the world that you live in, the community you are connected to, to find solace in that grief and in that rage and in that compassion. That you can move forward to extend from one step, from one cycle to the next, to enter new paradigms of perception, of communication, to illuminate to build communion, to inspire change, to transmute malice through tenderness,
and through love. Not out of weakness. But because love is the greatest punishment for malevolence. It's the balancing force. You're just telling me to just share the expression that uh, that I've been repeating over and over lately. That light is just energy brought to awareness. And that shadow is just energy not understood or integrated. Hopefully you can integrate a more complex awareness of that truth in the way that you uniquely are meant to understand it. And with that, I'm being told to close it out and that we're done. Bye.